as we delve deeper into the subject of dark versus light, then in walks the Mandalorian. And I have always been a huge fan of the Mandalorian culture and way because they have a path. You see, all of these ideals, like the Rebels or the Sith or the Mandalorian, right? It's all about finding your way out of the darkness or into the darkness. And if you look at, if you look at the Jedi as this religious faction with tried and true, it's always worked, so it's always going to work, which is completely runs against the entire philosophy of the Jedi that it's always worked so it's going to continue working Jedi are whatever doesn't work or whatever does work whatever the Jedi are steeped in tradition and prophecy and being at peace and being at one with the living force and letting go and being at peace is the ultimate touch of the force. And in many religions, you know, peace be with you. May the force be with you. It's that you don't need to worry when people say, give, give your worries to God, right? Or even when you look at the Taoist point of view, or you look at this idea of suffering being, being the way, that it doesn't mean that you are set out and that's what you're supposed to do is suffer, at least, at least not in the Jedi way. Suffering means that you are going to experience things that suck and they are the worst and they are the worst the worst the worst being cold being hungry being scared being lost being alone being pushed in with too many people being forced into different boxes of culture or or wealth or power or or the division of conservative versus liberalism it's you know it doesn't matter if it's pepsi or coke right at some point in your life once you make that choice of this is what i like and this is what i don't like that's that's connecting yourself to the dark side and it has to be because if you only drink Coke and you don't drink Pepsi, well, at some point you had to try a Pepsi and a Coke to even know that. And that's why Luke can go into that cave, you know, on Dagobah. It's dark side, it's dark side area, you know, maybe it's a dark side portal. But it's strong enough with the dark side that you can hide from the dark side in it. And oh, there's a religious saying. It's that uh, if uh, if the devil's not attacking you, then you're walking alongside him. Right. And that that devil is personal to each person. And some people have more than one devil. Some people have more than one problem. And they're looking for the way out. And then some people look so hard their whole life that they finally just go, I can't look anymore. So they turn to alcohol, they turn to drugs, or they ultimately sacrifice themselves because they cannot find their way back. And you feel as if Anakin's redemption comes quickly. 
like he's on the Death Star and Luke pulls off his helmet and you see him and he's turned back to the good, but he's dying at this point. His body is dying. The last, the last piece of the darkness is dying. And his redemption didn't begin right then. It didn't begin even when he threw Palpatine down the well. His redemption began the second he turned. The second there was no other option but the dark side. And as soon as the dark side filled him, the only thing he could do was go to the dark side. And once he got to the dark side, well, the only thing that's left to do, once you've given up everything and turned to the dark side and you use its power, it's like a drug that's so addicting. And you see those signs up everywhere, you know, don't use meth, not even once. And it's a community trying to say, just as Yoda said, once you start down that dark path, forever will it consume your fate. Well, we know that's not true. We can see that that's not true. Your fate is determined by your light. And once you start down the dark path, your light gets covered up more and more and more. And it gets harder and harder for that light to come out. And so... When we approach an idea of darkness, how do you get out of the darkness? You got to turn on a light. And you know, if you look at the Jedi way of why, okay, well, Jedis don't attack, they only defend. Well, you're in the dark forest and you're, you, you got to get out of it and you have a lightsaber and you cut off some branches and that ends up killing the tree. That's not justified by the Jedi. And yet it's understandable. Sometimes you have to cut off branches. Sometimes in the Jedi way, sometimes you have to sacrifice. And sometimes that's the only way that you could ever get to the light is by sacrificing, hacking at limbs, cutting them down. Like when, when Kylo flips out and he's, slicing up all the equipment and you're like why would he do that why is he doing that it's because he's attacking the machine that is keeping him from letting go of the hate it's easy when you run to the middle of a forest and you're all alone to sit and be at peace the hardest place to find peace is when you're in that dark place, when your mind is spinning, when you are full of rage, when you are full of anger, when you are full of fear, you cannot think straight. Your body is missing the signals. And so you center and you get back. And that's why the people that you see in the world that are happy, you can tell it's not based on wealth. And I'm not saying wealth can't make you happy. Wealth can make you happy. Whatever you, whatever to you can make you happy. And I'm not saying that wealth and power are always the dark side. And I'm not saying that success is the dark side. But in each situation where it is good versus evil, even inside you, when you're like, I am trying so hard just to live, just to pay rent, just to pay the car payment, just to have food on the table. All of those things are mechanic. They're there. You know, it's this needs this. You need money for food. Where do you get money? You got to get a job. If you don't get a job, you don't get money. You don't get money, you don't get food. You don't have food, you don't live. And you can obtain money and food and life and even, even for a short while, have power. It's totally based on anger or totally based on hate or 
completely based on fear. You can have all of these things. You can look at some political campaigns and the people that are willing, even in bad situations, to give in to the darkness and say, no, no, all those things I lost, I get back because I had it once. That means it's mine, so I get it. And that's that's the Jedi's way of trying to explain to the Sith where this is why they reject possessions and attachment, right? You cannot miss something you never had. Uh, that, that's not necessarily true. You, you, you can miss something that you never had, but that's want, right? That's future missing something. Okay, I want this. I want X. And I don't have it. And, oh, I'll never have that house or I'll never have the job I want. I'll never have these possessions, right? So that's that's a way of setting yourself up to lose. Because the Jedi don't look at things in that manner. At least they're not supposed to by doctrine. And they're not right. They're not wrong. They just are. And and of course, of course, in any situation, in any group of people, evil is already there. Even the best person you know in the world, the nicest person, they have darkness. Because you have to have the darkness. Because the darkness lets the light shine. If it's all light, then that's, then it's nothing. And if it's all dark, then it's nothing. They are the Alpha and the Omega, the light and the dark. And light isn't always based on photons. And light isn't always based on good and kind. It's about peace. It's about finding calm. It's about acceptance, which is the hardest thing in the world, no matter what anyone says. The hardest thing in the world is finding acceptance when you're in the dark. That's why you got to go to Dagobah. That's why you need a trainer. That's why you need a mentor. That's why you need that other person is because you have to venture into the dark a lot in life. You have to go into the darkness. And when Yoda says your, your weapons, you will not need them. He's trying to convey that the light is inside you. And when you go into these dark places, you got to cover that light up. And sometimes you have to do that in order to fit into these dark places. And that's how you get influenced or that's how you get, you know, brainwashed or that's how you get taken advantage of. Is thinking that these weapons, that a counterattack, that all of these things are going to help me. When acceptance and knowing I'm going into the dark, I'm going to be in there. And I've got to make my way out of the dark. Okay, so you have somebody waiting there. That's your mentor. Or you go into to the dark for somebody so you can show them, so you can leave the breadcrumbs that lead you along the path. And that is how the Jedi deal with darkness. It's not that they disavow darkness completely. It's not that attachments are, there's not, it's not like an illegal thing. You know, hurting someone else that's innocent. That's a crime. And that's galaxy wide. It's universal. 
But hurting yourself is the same crime. And you could go your whole life and never ever harm another person, never say a bad thing about another person, never raise your hands. Never fall to your knees crying in anger or pain. And you will have lost because of that. There is no teacher in the world as rich and powerful as pain and loss. They are teachers. That is why the darkness is behind you, right? You cast the shadow behind you. So the light gets on one side. Sometimes the light is too much and you got to turn your back to it. And the Mandalorians understand the darkness and the light so well. Because they put it on a stringent path. This is the way. All of the ancestors before carved a path, a roadway, a map. That's what lore is. That's what legends are. That's what canon is. It's a path. It's the way. And as you know, watching the Mandalorian, they're given these fetch quests. Hey, I need this. I lost this. I need you to go get this for me. And even in the relationship between Grogu and Mando, it wasn't until Mando gave him up. Because that was the way. That was the end of the Mandalorian way. When he gave, when Luke, he gave him to Luke for his training because that was the way. This is the way. And Grogu could have taken on his training. He could have absorbed it and become a Jedi and worked his way and done those things. But he had an attachment. An attachment to Mando. And Mando, by having an attachment to Grogu, who was supposed to be put into this box of religion, like follow with the Jedi way, go with the Jedi way. But he was traumatized when he was little by the way, the Jedi way. And there is this big point, the polished silver chrome Beskar of Din Djarin's armor is a significance that is so powerful, right? Because you go, why don't the Mandalorians take off their helmets? Why didn't, you know, Bo-Katan does it? You know, why doesn't Din Djarin, why, didn't, why don't we get to see Pedro Pascal's face? Why don't we get to see Oberon coming through the, you know? Look at the reflection of the armor. What are you supposed to see there? You see you. It doesn't have to be Pedro Pascal in there. It doesn't have to be Bo-Katan. It doesn't have to be Boba Fett. It doesn't have to be... It's a symbol. And when you look in the armor, you see yourself. And that's what Grogu sees when he looks at the helmet of his father. He sees his reflection and he sees, you know, the, the, the Mandalorian necklace and he sees all of these things because in that Mandalorian reflection, even though in a way it resembles the clone troopers outfits with the T-shaped visor and, you know, it, but they don't reflect. They absorb the white stormtroopers suits are contrast. They're contrast. We, we, it, it's like you're covering up the good. You're saying that this outfit represents me being good. So you don't need to see the person inside. And that's why Finn 
such a powerful, powerful character. And he's a, he, he's a child, right? He, he's, he doesn't know anything other than this. And so when he finally makes the decision to turn against the dark side, it's influenced by his force sensitivity, right? Because he doesn't know anything else. That's what the entire dark side is about. Everyone's the same. Everyone is there. Everyone is, this is it. You have this job. It's black and white. It's an absolute. You're a stormtrooper. I don't care what your name is. I don't care what your face is. It's a number so we can find you if we need to. So we don't lose you. And you're white. So we can find I you can in the dark. You in war. That's why the stormtroopers, you know, they're, they're, their white outfits are so, so evil. Because it's a representation of purity. Oh, like, like if you look at hate groups that, whatever color they pick for their hate, they push that out there in front of them. The colors and the symbols and the rhetoric and, and you know, the shock things that they say. Because hate can only be that. In order for you to continue hating, you have to make other people hate you. And then you can feel something off of that hate. You know, when people like to, to, to stir up the crowd, cause you know, turmoil. That's the dark side. Saying, hey, I'm in here. Find me. They're yelling, screaming. I got lost in the dark and I can only scream at you with hate. And people lost in the dark, when they scream for help, it's not always kind. In fact, it usually isn't. It's usually a scream saying, I hate you because I hate you. It doesn't always mean I hate you. It means I hate what is happening right now. I hate that I can't find my way out of the darkness. So instead of getting out of the darkness, I'm going to bring someone else in and another person and another person and another person. And that is a way to perpetuate the darkness. It's going to be there. Hey, groups, good, bad, evil, all of these things, all of these disenfranchised people in the world get a choice. Everything is going to be okay. The force will be with you. And always. <laughs> That's why redemption stories are so big. Is because it's not that you chose incorrectly when you were younger. It's not that somebody else chose the wrong path for you. It's when you do get to make the choice. How far in the darkness are you? Are you so far down that you have to scream and bring other people into the darkness? Or are you on the edge of the darkness? And you simply need to turn your face to the light. When Kylo Ren says, let the past die, kill it if you have to. What he's meaning is clearly a Jedi philosophy. He can't let go of the past because he cannot have that loss because that loss will frustrate him. It will give him anger. It will give him fear. And Ray's whole drive throughout is, who are my parents? What am I? Blah, blah. And it sounds heartless when he says they were nobody. So he sees it, you know, and that as a storyline shook us all to our core. But as a philosophy, what he's saying is, you have to let go of that. What does it matter 
if they aren't here now, what does it matter if they were kings and queens or peasants and slaves or evil and dark? It doesn't matter because it doesn't matter that Palpatine is evil and you're related to them. There are millions and billions of people in the world that have an evil person in their life. And once you get away from that evil person, you can't keep looking back on it. Even a good person, if they aren't good for your life, and they're in the dark, and you can't go into the dark because you don't have the strength or you aren't ready or you aren't trained or you simply don't know. Then your choice is either to bring them out of the darkness or to let them go and let them find their way out. Because maybe that's not your story to pull them out of the darkness. Maybe your story is to shine your light so their darkness is a little less. In the Mandalorian way, they follow a path. And that path leads them home. They took Mandalore, so we gotta get back. We have the sword. How do we know who's king? Oh, the one that's got the sword. The Darksaber. Right? It's, it's duality on us on high. It's it's the you don't lean more toward the light or the dark. Um, doesn't matter. Dark saber's gone. Darkness isn't gone. Light isn't gone. It's just showing that you want to be king? If you want to be king, then or queen or you want to you want to rule. If you want to rule, the only way that you can rule it's by letting go of all of that. That's true leadership. That's a true king in the in the simplest form of being a king is that you can you can be a king. You don't need someone else to tell you. And you go, "Well, I want the money and the power." Again, that's a dark ruler. By, very, by ruling in its own, by even having the desire to rule, you have to go toward the dark. Because to rule over everything is to rule over the light and the dark. And not everyone wants to do that. They want to have a dark king and a light king, and they fight. Instead of doing any of that, it's letting go of all of it and saying, look, you, this other, whomever you are against or whomever is attacking you or whatever is scaring you, whatever's hurting you, whatever's making you hate. Don't make friends with it. That's not it. But don't make an enemy of it either. Because that's just adding another enemy to the queue. Instead, Accept it and find your way out of it. Some things are unchangeable. Life and death are the same thing. Coming into life and going out of life are the same thing. And it's hard because you go, no, wait, I live this life and I have all these memories and all these people I've met and all these things I've done. And I need to pay all of these people back. I need to, you know, all of the kind people that have done things. Or I need to pay them back because of all the bad things they did to me. Let it go. Let it go. Because in the end, at the end of the day, or the end of the night, 
whenever you pass from the living. You are in the exact same place as you are as being alive. You are here in this moment now. And in this moment, if you have your arms full, if your arms are full of hate, if you put hate, you pick it up along the way, hate, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. These are the things that, this is, this goes against my belief, it's wrong. You pick all those things up and you're holding all the all this hate and you and your your hands are full. It's like like you you got the car and you don't want to leave bags in the car from the grocery store. Your hands are full. And in each of those bags is hate. Hate, 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 hate. Sim symbolically, you know, not your groceries. I mean, if you hate your groceries, that's your thing. <sighs> but you're carrying all this all this hate. And the more hate you pick up, the heavier the load the harder it is to move. And once your arms are full, 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 you've carried, you've got all that you can carry and it's all hate. How are you going to pick up light? How are you going to pick up love? How are you going to pick up good things? So drop it. All of the hate, all of the anger, all of the fear, all of the insecurity. Okay, you can't drop it all at once. But sometimes you get such a heavy load in your arms of the darkness that you drop it on someone else. And now it's their problem. Or it gets knocked out of your hands. Or it gets taken. And now that person ha is carrying all of your hate. Or you hand it to somebody. And look, you don't have to hand somebody all of your hate, but you can hand them a portion of it, a portion that they can handle that you can't. Here, here is some of my darkness because I don't know what to do with it. So you hand that to them. Now you have a free hand for light. A lightsaber pierces the darkness, right? That just, you see the symbolism there. And so the dark saber. is the past. It's heavy. When Mando tries to wield it, it's heavy. The tip of it sticks into the ground. Everybody's like, this is the thing that makes you king. It's nothing. It's an item. A trinket that wasn't with you when you were born and won't be with you when you die. All you have is your force ghost or your life force, whatever your belief is, all your existence, that which you brought into you when you came into the world, that goes out with you when you leave the world, is your only need. Because needs are all that matter. Wants don't. Wants are, wants are, you know, there's a dark side. And uh, uh, you need the dark side. I'm not saying get rid of it, but you see how want, want, desire, need, hope, 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 hope. Wait, hope's good. Yeah, yeah. But hope isn't usually for a physical item. Prayers are a hope that you send up to heaven. And that's by cursing, you know, at least in conservative religious society, cursing's bad because you're sending that to heaven. You see? When you say when you say a word that you believe is bad, but the truth is they're just anything you say, anything you do, that's just ape sounds. Right? They're just sounds. It's a dog barking. What is he saying? I don't know. He's mad about something. So it doesn't matter. 
what he's saying. It's clear cut. He's protecting or he's angry. You know, you're the, the dog barking. It's a resounding sound. It may be a warning, but a warning is fear. In some ways, not always, of course, a warning is a hey, don't go down that road. You, there's a tree and a dinosaur. So, but again, that is still rooted in fear. Don't go down that road. Go this road. This is the way, right? And that's why the Mandalore split the light and the dark side right down the middle. Because they are on a path. And if you have a path and you trust that path, and you know that if every time I go down this path, I'm going to get to this place. It doesn't matter if it's light. It doesn't matter if it's dark. As long as you're on that path. You stay on that path. And you, it will either take you back to where you were. Or take you further into where you weren't. This is the way. The Mandalorians stay on the path and they trust it. But everything else that happens along the way is life. The things that knock you off the path, the things that pull you down the wrong path, the people you follow off. So then you got to make your way back to the path. And that's what. Grogu and Mando are doing. They know the path is there. They made the path back to Mandalore. They did all the things to do the things. And that's why you see them in the inn. You know, sitting there on the front porch. and It's because that is what they found. It's okay to sit down. It's okay to wear your silly costume. It's okay to play in the yard with the frogs. Because everything that's off the path can only be good or bad. And <laughs> that's the beauty of life. So as we go down this path, who do we meet along the way? Oh, you, you, you like this path too? Let's walk on it together. And sometimes that path forks and they've got to walk off a different way. Doesn't mean that you, you don't love them anymore. It doesn't mean that you don't need them anymore. It doesn't mean that you won't reconnect again. But what it does mean is they are now on another path. You can either lead them or you can follow them. Or you can take your own path. And if those paths meet up again, then that's a gift. And if they never do, then they never were going to. So don't force it. Because forcing it, pushing it, squeezing it, wrenching it, holding on so tight that you choke it to death. That's not the way. rockets or whatever you know, Mando has and 
But the power has nothing to do with the force between his relationship with him and Grogu. What has to do with his love. And it's congruent love. I love you, you love me. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's, it's a Barney thing. But that's why the empire above us, our governments, our, our rulers, our people that they chose a way and they want to impose that way on you. And that's why we have different divides of groups and all of these different things. But instead of going, I, I, I hate you because you're going down that path. Instead go, you're going down that path. And I'm going down this path. And let's see. Let's look ahead. Where do they meet up? Where are they super far apart? And instead of hating you for that, we find a place where we can meet and walk along together on the path. Because if you don't, if you don't find a way to walk along the path with the people that are against what you say, then you are simply them in a different light. If someone says, I hate blue, and another person says, I hate red, and you both will never agree, you know, to hate the same thing, well, then that, then, then that puts an aisle between the two of you. And there are people on the path that, that like blue and they like red, and you mix them and that's the purple, right? Okay, that works there. And it doesn't matter what the colors are or any of that. Because the truth is, it's just a symbolism. I believe one thing, you believe something else. We either find a common ground or we don't walk on the same path. And some will follow you and some will follow me. And whoever gets... More people to follow them gets to say that's their path. Great. But what does that do? What does one path matter in the grand scheme of the entire universe? An infinite, expanding, ever-changing, ununderstandable universe. Where are we going? Where were we? Where are we? We don't know. And if we do know, then you don't tell everyone else. Well, that's just as good as not knowing. The problem is when you believe so strong in something for yourself and it's truth to you, it may not be someone else's truth. But if you're lost, look for the path. If you're lost in the dark, turn on the light. If you're lost in the light, put a shadow over the thing that's blocking your eyes and get back to the path. And the path is going to lead you either to the past or to the future. But if you just stand on the road, if you stand on the path, then you're in someone's way. And instead of stepping off the path and getting lost yourself, either help them get back on the path or carry on, not concerning. Maybe not concerning is the right thing. Maybe it's, it's that if you can't do anything, at least don't make it worse. And caring too much for something is again, a path to the darkness. So the only way, the only way to know you are going the right direction is to actually be on the path. 
And no one can really tell you. You can ask directions. You know, hey, is that, is that, do I go this way or do I go this way? But every time I've ever asked directions, you know, in, in life direction, right? Every time I've found a different way. Or I've gone this path, but I found a better path. Or maybe I found a path that's not shorter, but it's prettier. And every time I've gotten off the path, I've gotten lost in the weeds. And so for the Mandalorians, the path is their lifeline. It's their breadcrumbs. It's their heart. It's their armor. It's their Beskar. It's that unbreakable, unstainable, unchangeable thing. The path leading from the past to the future. This is the way. Everything is going to be okay. The Force will be with you. Always. <laughs>